Alcohol is a core part of our social lives. And from the looks and sound of it, this is a traditional cocktail. But it doesn't contain any alcohol. People's thirst for non-alcoholic drinks is growing. And it's a trend that extends beyond dry January. Today, people are willing to pay $13 for a non-alcoholic cocktail like this one. On this episode, we visit two spots serving cocktails to satisfy sober palates. Lorelai Bandrowski created a booze-free bar in 2018 after noticing a serious lack of options in non-alcoholic nightlife. Listen Bar exists in order to create an option for people who want to go out and they don't feel like drinking. And what started as a five-day pop-up became a roaming monthly affair. I really wanted to push a different kind of social experience, a different kind of nightlife, a little bit more rowdy, rough around the edges, a little bit more loose. And we've had so many different themes from karaoke to speed dating to pride, you name it. It's just like a unique event in the city. Like everywhere you go, like if I go to a work event, on a date, like there's always alcohol involved. So like I've brought a date to Listen Bar before just to do something different and like not drink on a Tuesday night. This sentiment is growing, especially among millennials. In 2019, 66% of American millennials said they would take steps to reduce their alcohol consumption. Our customers are really from all over the spectrum and two thirds of them are drinkers. Some of these customers identify as sober curious, which describes anyone who isn't fully abstaining, but is questioning their drinking habits and cutting back. The term was first coined in 2018 by Ruby Warrington in her book, Sober Curious. We want to shift the conversation away from this divide of drinker and sober. Listen Bar is judgment free. You know, we don't care if you're sober or hungover. Listen Bar keeps it lively with curated playlists from guest musicians, a tattoo artist, drink specials, and even CBD drops. To create a booze-free zone, the pop-up transforms existing traditional bars. We take all the alcohol off the shelves and, you know, if there's bar taps, we'll take like the regular beer taps off and put our kombucha tap on. The cocktails will set you back more than a soda, at around $11 a piece. Our drinks are on par with traditional cocktails, both in terms of flavor and in terms of the actual cost to produce. Crafted by mixologists, these drinks taste similar to classic cocktails. They're a combination of common ingredients like fruits and bitters with non-alcoholic liqueurs like Seedlip and Kin Euphorics. These young liqueur brands, whose bottles run $30 to $40 each, are tapping into a lucrative market. Retail sales of non-alcoholic beverages grew by $1.1 billion from 2018 to 2019. Innovative mixed drinks are also a draw at Getaway, another alcohol-free bar. We're not just competing with the non-alcoholic bars, we're competing with all of New York City nightlife. Getaway opened last year as the first standalone alcohol-free bar in New York City. Everyone had kind of said, oh, we'll do this as part of a community center or we'll rent out part of a bar for one night a week. But no one had really said, like, we're making a non-alcoholic bar. Getaway has all the elements of a standard bar. Loud music, dim lighting, and a bar where customers sip crafted cocktails. It's not like we're offering an anti-alcohol. We're not serving a product that is like the opposite of alcohol. Our philosophy was like, the drinks that we're serving should feel like a cocktail. So we try to incorporate a lot of interesting non-alcoholic bitters or chili oil, um, like cardamom extract, the tobacco syrup. At 13 bucks, these mixed drinks aren't cheap, but Sam Thonis says they're worth the price. We found at least people will pay for those drinks. You know, they appreciate the craft that goes into them. They appreciate the freshness of the ingredients. It isn't all about crafting the perfect cocktail, though. Thonis created the space with his older brother in mind. He stopped drinking four years ago, and all of a sudden we realized there weren't really great options for places for us to go and hang out. It just occurred to me that, you know, if one person wants a place like this, maybe there's more people who want it. Listen Bar will soon join its ranks as a brick and mortar business. At the end of the year, it'll settle into a permanent New York City location, made possible by crowdfunding. 
And one of those early backers was Getaway. Honestly, right now, I just think it's good that people are interested and that there's more of a market for this. Dry January is in full swing, and Heineken, a top brewer with the second largest beer sales in the world, is also cashing in on the non-alcoholic trend with Heineken Zero Zero. Joining me now is Borja Manso Salinas, the Vice President of Marketing at Heineken USA. So Borja, is there a growing market for non-alcoholic drinks? We have launched this uh, globally in 2017. We launched, I think, in 14 European markets and Russia. And uh, last year we launched, it, uh, we launched it here. It's now in 38 markets, I think. It's growing everywhere. There are markets where the non-alcoholic category uh, was bigger. So in terms of absolute sales, it's bigger than here, like in Europe, for example, or in Russia. But it's growing strongly everywhere. It's been a huge success here, too. It's mostly people who want to moderate consumption. So this is for those of us who at some times don't want to, to have the effects of alcohol, but just want to have a beer. So what's driving the trend? There is more and more uh, moderation, more and more uh, consciousness about uh, well-being and health. And it's a trend that is pretty much being driven by the US. So despite the growth, is it still just a trend or will it fizzle out? No pun intended. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we don't think it will. I mean, this is uh, for us as a company, this is a long term uh, strategy. We're a family company and we have been always at the forefront of promoting responsible consumption and moderation. So we've got some beer on set. It's Heineken Zero Zero and mm -hmm. we can drink at nine in the morning, which is exactly. great. So let's uh, now you can. You know, so, pop one open. Exactly. Yeah. I don't feel guilty the, about it. This is the sort of thing that you couldn't do before. Yeah. You know, you can. Cheers. Cheers. Tell me what you think. It tastes like beer. Very and good. it has these sort of sour mm -hmm. notes as well, which I like. And so is there a difference mm. in how you would brew this compared to, a non uh, to an alcoholic beer? <clears throat> I mean, this being Heineken, it's being brewed with exactly the same ingredients. It's a 100% natural product. So the, the beer, if you are not allowed into beer, it has four basic ingredients, which is water, malted barley. Mm -hmm. It has hops. The thing when you are doing alcohol-free beer is that you brew the beer more or less normally, but then you have to remove the alcohol. And in that process, a lot of what makes beer taste great goes away. And it's very, you have to put it back mm -hmm. somehow. So we, it took us, it took our master brewers, which are some of the best in the, in the business worldwide, 15 years to come up with the recipe for, for this. So there's absolutely no alcohol in this. The name there's says 0 .0. so. 0.0. 0. 0.0. So yeah. if you're under 21, you can go and buy this or? We will not market this uh, to people under legal drinking age. Okay. Regardless of the legalities in each state, this we we this is a Heineken product, and we want to sell it only to people over over legal drinking age. We'll see you next time on another episode of Business Insider Today. 